Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can give a player a force field by touching a part. So what I have in the background here, this blue part here, when the player touches it, it'll give the player a force field, and that'll protect them from taking damage from this red part over here. So if I move my player over to this red part and touch it, you can see that the player takes damage. But then if I go over to this blue part first and touch it, it gives the player a force field, and when I go over this part, it no longer damages the player. After about 5 seconds, it takes the force field away, and another player can go back to this part and activate the force field again. Alright, so let's go ahead and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a script to whatever part you want to use to give the player the force field. In my case, it's the blue part, so I'm going to add a script to that. Inside the script here, the first thing I'm going to do is say local force part is going to be equal to script dot parent. So this just creates a reference for my blue part that I can use later on in the script. Next, I'm going to be defining a function that will run whenever the part gets touched. To do that, I'm going to say local function. The name of our function can be force field. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to put the parameter other part. So other part is whatever other object touches our blue part. Inside the function, I'm going to say local humanoid. And we're going to set that equal to other part dot parent. So what we're doing here, let's say the player's foot touches the blue part. Then other part will be the player's foot. And by saying dot parent, we're going to see what that foot belongs to, which will be the player's model. Inside that player's model, we're going to say colon and then find first child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put humanoid. So we're looking for a humanoid part. Then we're going to say if humanoid. So if it's able to find the humanoid part, then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new force field and give it to the player. So to do that, we're going to say local force is equal to instance dot new. And we're creating a new force field. After that, we're going to say force dot parent. So this will be the location for the force field. And we're going to set that equal to humanoid dot parent. So this will be the player. We're going to wait for five seconds. And then we're going to get rid of the force field by saying force, colon, and destroy. Down here at the bottom, we're going to connect this part being touched to the function by saying force part, dot touched, colon connect. And then we're going to connect this with the function we just created. So before we run the game, we're going to try to make the script a little bit better by adding one more variable. So here we're going to say local can activate. And we're going to set this equal to true. And down here, what we're going to say is we're going to say if humanoid and can activate. Then what we're going to do inside the if statement is say can activate is equal to false. And then after the force field gets destroyed, we'll say can activate is equal to true. So the reason we added this additional variable is so that it doesn't create a bunch of these force fields inside the player. Once the player touches that part, it'll create one force field. And then it won't be able to create a new one inside the player until the can activate is set back to true. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the script, and then we'll come back and see what else we can do with it. Okay, so I'm going to have my player go over to the blue part, and we'll make sure that the force field appears. And there we go. It looks good. The player gets a force field whenever they touch the blue part. Let's go ahead and head back to the script and see something else we can do with this. So let's go ahead and add some lines so that whenever the player touches the part, it'll disappear and then reappear once it's able to give another force field. So to do that, what we're going to do is right below this line here, we're going to say force part dot transparency. We're going to set this equal to 1 to make it invisible. We're also going to turn off can collide for this part. So we're going to say force part dot can collide. And we're going to set this equal to false. And then down here, we're going to paste those two lines and just reverse what we did. So we're going to say transparency is equal to zero. And we're going to set can collide back to true. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out with these new changes. So now my player can go over to the blue part to touch it. When the player touches it, the part disappears. And then after five seconds, when the force field disappears, the part will reappear again. All right, and before we end with this video, let me go ahead and show you how to set up the damage block so that you can use it with the force field. 
It's important to know for the force field that it's only going to protect the player from taking damage whenever take damage is used. If I do something like humanoid.health and set this equal to something like 25, then it's not going to protect the player from that. So however you're going to damage the player, if you want the force field to be effective, make sure that you're using this method right here. So the way I set this up is whenever the player touches this part, it's going to make sure that the player has a humanoid part. And then after that, it's going to say humanoid and then take damage. This value inside the parentheses will be the amount of damage it deals. And that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one. <laughs>